Hey everyone, it's Mo Jacks, not in the DJ City UK lab. Today I'm in Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Why am I here? Well, it's because In Music, the parent company behind Denon DJ, Rain DJ, Newmark and Akai, amongst other brands, have decided they want to show their 2020 lineup of products to people like myself who make videos and reviews for YouTube, that kind of stuff. They want to show this stuff to us in a more relaxed and kind of calm atmosphere than what we will find at the NAM trade show in California next week. So we'll get a really good chance to get to know these products and really get dig down and get to know them in person. The big headline acts that we've been shown so far are the new Prime Series devices. So we have the SC6000 Prime and the SC6000M along with the X1850 mixer that goes with the setup. So today we're gonna to take a first look at the players the next video you'll see from me will be on the mixer and then who knows there may be a few more things to come as the week progresses let's get to it the first thing i want to note is that the prime series devices always seem to be incredibly difficult to film because all of the leds on the unit seem to cycle at wildly different frequencies so when you see things pulsing or flashing here in the video you can rest assured that the human eye doesn't see that the lights are all stable in real life and it's the camera that can't deal with them so with that out of the way, what are we looking at here with the 6000s? Well, they're the new flagship models from Denon DJ intended to replace the SC5000 at the top of the company's lineup. The launch of these does not mean that the 5000s are dead though, far from it, as those will still be available to buy just at a new more affordable price point of around $1100. The new models will have a street price of around $1500 for the 6000 Prime and $1700 for the 6000M, and that means they're still quite a bit below competing products which are already Already on the market. Interestingly, the core functionality of the 6000s is not a million miles away from the 5000s at all. With this release, Denon DJ have made improvements to the hardware itself, and the underlying standalone technology, which the company calls Engine OS, remains largely the same across these, the 5000s, and the Prime 42, which is great from both a consistency standpoint and because it reassures me that the older models will continue to be shown love by the company moving forward. More on that later. That means with the SC6000s you get everything you previously did on the 5Ks. Three USB inputs, an SD card slot, dual deck functionality so each player is two decks in one, and both wired and wireless networking which will allow streaming from Tidal now with BeatSource, BeatPort and SoundCloud Go Plus to come later. As with the previous line, there are two models, the SC6000 Prime with a static jog wheel and the SC6000M with a spinning platter for that turntable feel. Aside from the jogs, both of those are pretty much identical. With the SC6000 sharing so many features in common with the 5000s, in this first look I'll mostly just address the stuff that is completely new, diving deeper when it comes to my full review at a later date. If you want to know how things like the pad section works, well, that is the same as the 5000s, so by all means go back and do research by watching my previous episodes about those players. I'll start with the aesthetics on the new players. It's not a feature improvement, but something which a lot of users wanted. The 6000s have a far more subtle styling overall than the 5000s, with more subdued lighting and the swapping of chrome knobs for black, things like that. Personally, I like my gear to look loud and brash, so I was good with the older models, but I can see that the new look will be a hit with a lot more DJs. The most visible feature difference is the screen, which gets a size boost from an already decent 7 inches to 10.1 inches, the same size as the one found on the Prime 4. That really is massive on an individual player, far bigger than anything we've ever seen before. It's effectively the difference between an iPad mini and a full-size iPad. As before, the display is fully multi-touch with gestures like pinch to zoom, and it's fast and intuitive to use. At this point, Denon DJ don't seem to have made a lot of changes to the UI in order to fully utilize all that new available space. In most respects, it looks like an SC5000 screen blown up bigger. I'd like them to maybe examine options for that at a later date because there is definitely potential to make, say, the overview waveforms bigger at the bottom of the screen. Denon DJ have brought along one great example of that themselves, offering a new browser view with 10 tracks on screen instead of 6. That would be a little on the small side on a 5000, but it works really well here. A new feature in Engine OS which I really like is the preview mode. When the playing deck is paused, you can press on the artwork of a track in your crate or playlist and skip through previewing whichever parts of the track you like without having to load it to a deck. When linked through the X1850 mixer, that's even locked off to make it impossible to accidentally play a preview over the main output, which is very clever, but I'll talk about that more when I look at the mixer. So we ought to talk about those jog wheels because they have not only got bigger, but better too, certainly on the SC6000 Prime at least. 
The 7 inch capacitive jogs on the 5000 Prime were probably my least favourite aspect of the player. They were perfectly usable, but the momentum they had when you were queuing up or scratching always felt a little sluggish. I could never find a tension setting I was 100% happy with. But on the 6000, they have completely redesigned them. So while still using the same technology, the weighting and feel is very different. The lightest tension setting is much lighter than before, and I was able to dial it into a point I felt comfortable with very quickly. The size increase from 7 inches to eight and a half is interesting obviously that's not like a standard size which relates back to any particular vinyl format but in use it does seem like an ideal compromise between being comfortable and still remaining portable even the spinning platter m version remains lighter than a rain 12 which as the name implies features a 12 inch platter Speaking of the M version, that will remain my player of choice in this new generation. There's less going on with that one, with the underlying tech still being pretty much the same as on the 5000M, but again, there is that slight increase in control offered by the larger control surface, which is very welcome. Otherwise, the performance is very similar, with the powerful direct drive motor offering a feel just like using vinyl on a regular turntable. One quick note related to that, the method for attaching, adjusting and releasing the control disc has changed to match the current setup on the Rain 12s, with a simple push button arrangement doing away with the need to use an Allen key for those jobs. A pretty significant improvement, especially if you're like me and like to switch out different control discs on a regular basis. A few other small things to mention, the power cable is now a locking IEC connector which offers ultimate reliability for live use. Both players will support controller mode with Serato DJ Pro, although that's not available yet. I like that the footprint on the 6000s is not much bigger than the 5Ks, despite the bigger screen and jogs. They should fit in pretty much any space where the 5000s have been previously. And finally, my absolute favourite feature of the Prime 4 has made it over to the 6000s, a built-in internal SATA bay underneath the body allowing you to keep a 2.5 inch ssd drive inside the players at all times i didn't understand at first just how cool it would be to have a big drive with your whole collection living inside a device until i had it on the prime 4 and so now the idea of having it inside an individual player makes me very pleased indeed so there you go, my first look at the new SC6000 and 6000M players from Denon DJ. Overall, very exciting stuff, some solid upgrades, lots of stuff which people have asked for in a new generation of players. The big screens are quite crazy, but in a good way. And I like the bigger platters as well. I think those will give turntablists in particular a lot to think about. For me, the most exciting thing here on this desk right now is the fact that we have an SC5000 and that doesn't suddenly feel completely out of date. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's great to have new hardware, but when you're trying to build an ecosystem, as Denon DJ are trying to do with the Prime series, it's so important that users of older hardware don't feel like they're getting cut off. And this still feels like a relevant, up-to-date product now. The improvements really with the 6000 are mostly in hardware, and any software improvements so far that I've seen are going to be in the 5000 as well so yeah that's a very good sign as far as i'm concerned there will be a full review of course of these players coming up on the channel in a few weeks time so make sure you're locked in and, and keep looking out for those as we go on and then yeah we'll have some other bits to talk about as the week progresses thank you for watching today make sure you subscribe for all our future tips tricks and product reviews i'll see you soon